What's going on guys? I'm pumped to bring you this video today. My name is Caleb Strackengast. This is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. Turkey season is coming to a close. Today is the last day of turkey season here in North Carolina and I'm tagged out so I'm actually not hunting today. But something even more exciting is going on today and I finally have my bow in hand for the, what I'm gonna shoot for the 2024 season. Let's go ahead and get a couple things out in the open. Some of the accessories that I'm gonna put on this bow were sent to me, uh, I did not pay for them. With that being said, I was already gonna buy that accessory, well actually it's just one accessory that was given to me, but uh, I was going to already shoot that before I realized I was gonna get one for free. So everything that I say about that product is going to be 100% what I think, 100% what I feel about that product. Uh, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. With exception of that, uh, as most of you know that have already seen the channel, each year for the last several years, Grafton Archery has allowed me to come in, review the bows, and choose which bow I wanna shoot for the year, and they'll actually give me that bow. And I shoot that bow until I choose to get another one, and then we'll kinda of swap bows. I'll sell my old one, give them the money, and we just continue to do that. The cool thing about that is it allows me to shoot of the four brands, where actually there's five brands up here, but of the brands that we carry up here at the shop, I get to shoot whichever brand I want. So you can 100% guarantee whichever bow I choose to shoot is the one that I liked the most and that I feel like uh, is gonna most fit what I wanna do for this year. This year is no exception. So even though I'm shooting a Matthews, and even though it seems like a ton of people are switching over to the Matthews this year uh, that may be sponsored by them, I am not sponsored by Matthews. The accessories, all the stuff I am having to pay for, the bow I did not have to pay for, so just to get that out in the air. So whatever I'm shooting here, 100% uh, is what I'm choosing to shoot and not what I'm required to shoot because of a sponsorship. All right, now that that's out of the way, drum roll please. Let's get into the, uh, the bow that's in this box. Ooh. And uh, this is a little bit different for me if you've seen my videos in the past. The coloring on this bow for you that have actually seen my videos, you're probably gonna comment on it because I have a black riser bow for the first time ever. And for those of you that have seen my channel, you know that I have kind of bashed black bows in uh, recent past, but I ended up going with a Matthews Lift 29 and a half, black riser, earth limbs, tan strings, and earth accessories for this year. Something about this color combination. Uh, Muley Freak had one that I saw, um, and go check their channel out. He has a Matthews Lift build on there as well. But I saw his color combination and I wanted one, so that's what I ended up going with. That's why I went with this color. All right, guys, so we got the brand new lift, 29 and a half, out of the box. Let's put it in the vise and get some accessories on it. And I'll go ahead and talk about the accessories that I chose and why I chose them. So uh, if you guys haven't already checked this little bow vise out, this is the uh, bow bars um, bow vise. And I've got a video out there um, when they actually sent me this vise to test out. And I've been, especially for the money, it is so hard to beat this little vise. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing set in here, clamped in good and tight, just to make it a little easier for me to work on this bow. The main goal for this bow this year is to stay as light and nimble as possible while still maintaining accuracy. I really believe that with the new Matthews bows, really all these bows are kind of designed, pretty much all the big brands are kind of designed to use their accessories and to be uh, used to the best of their abilities with their specific accessories. Matthews, I think more than any, has uh, really kind of honed in their game on uh, really fine tuning their accessories, like fine tuning their entire platform. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and use the bridge lock stabilizers this year. This will be my first year running them. And I really like anything else. I like to tinker and I like to run the, the best things I can on my bows. And this year, I'm, like I said, I'm trying out 
the bridge lock stuff. And right now this is a 12 inch bridge lock stabilizer and I'm going to set that at its farthest setting. There we go. Definitely don't want to cross thread them for sure. Kind of wiggle that back and forth until it seats in. Get it good and snugged. All right, so bridge lock, 12 inch stabilizer. Get some of the cardboard dust off of it. As far as a rest this year, I ran this rest last year. Um, the, I ran the M or the original uh, Integrate last year. This is the MX2. They do make one that's Matthew specific. I'm just running the standard, uh, this the QAD. Really the only difference is the uh, Matthew specific has the Matthews logo on it and it's a little bit more expensive. And if you guys wanna see a full setup on uh, one of these rests, uh, comment down below and let me know and I'll do that in another video. Um, today's video is mainly about my bow setup, not so much about the specific setup of each accessory. So before I mount that, just because I have it out, I am going to change this drop away cord out for a different color. And this year I am going to run a blue, uh, kind of in honor of my grandpa that passed away. His favorite color was light blue. So that's what I'm gonna run in my bows this year. Let me get a lighter. And this is just D loop material. I like to run mine with a little extra out the front just in case I need to adjust something in the field. Get that back tight. Now this just mounts like last year's version did directly to the back of the dovetail back here. Set that back to zero. And you just loosen that set screw, loosen that screw until, and there's a mark on the back of the riser that I'll try to show you. Go ahead and lock that in pretty tight. There's a mark on the back of the riser that right there. I like to start everything at zero and get everything set as close as possible right out the get go. And doing so, there's a lot less adjustment on the back end. All right, there it is. That one's dead on the money. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my base plate back on or my face plate back on there. Get it good and tightened. It looks like it's dead on the money. So we got the rest set. Now, as far as the site, this is something that I am extremely excited about. I'll have a video link down below that uh, talks about this entire setup and what all is what all it is. But this is the Tetra Reason or Tetra Max Reason Three uh, with a Dark Owl Stealth Forty One scope on the front. St right now, it's set up in the single pin iteration because I don't know my full setup yet. But once I get that set. I will then be getting the three pin from Cody at Dark Owl and uh, we'll get that set up as well. I'm going to run this thing as far in as I can, which is about right there. And you can definitely, on these Matthews, you can definitely run it without doing the bridge lock, um, but I feel like the bridge lock is just, it's so hard to beat. Go ahead and put my set screw in. And once I decide exactly where I want this and I get everything set up, I will blue lock tight that screw in. But 
But starting out, I want that as far back as I can get it. And HHA makes a longer bar for this, um, or they make a longer bar version of this sight bar. I got the shorter one. I think it's like a four to five inch. All right, that's good and tight in there. Now, last but not least, the quiver. All right, so I got some Loctite on that thing, probably a little bit too much. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. All right, now one thing to keep in mind, guys, this is about as tight, or it is, this is the best option to get a quiver that mounts as tight as possible to this bow, but you do have to run the bridge lock um, accessories in order to make this thing work. Now they do have a um, like a standoff or a I guess that's the best way to describe it I guess is a standoff that'll actually extend this uh, quiver out but like I said my whole goal behind this is to get this thing as tight as possible to the bow Got it good and snug. Check the bottom again. Good and snug. And that's it, guys. That All right, guys, so now that we got the accessories on the bow, I'm gonna go ahead and tie in my serving loops. I saw this on one of Levi Morgan's things, and before you jump on me about Levi Morgan not knowing everything and all this, I don't care what you think about the guy, number one archer in the world, probably knows something, so. I'm gonna try this. He said he takes and measures axle to axle, divides that by two, marks a mark, puts an arrow in, ties the serving loops, and starts from there. So I've measured axle to axle, and it should be 14 and 11 sixteenths to the center. I'm gonna measure from the bottom of one cam to the bottom of the other cam, 25 and 3 eighths. So 25 divided by two would be 12 and a half. So what would that be? Let's see, 14 and 11 sixteenths from the axles. So 25.375 divided by two is 12 and 11 sixteenths. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hopefully find, yeah, nope, find a marker, and I'm going to measure 12 and 11 sixteenths Then I'm gonna measure from the other side, 12 and 11 sixteenths. And that's not quite the same. It's really about 12 and 5 eighths from the center of these. Yeah, 12 and 5 eighths is dead on the center of both of those. So got a mark center to center. That should be dead center. Now, when I put this in theory, when I put this arrow in here, because this rest, this QAD is set up exactly where it's marked supposed to be, when I put this arrow in here, it should be pretty well dead on the money. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie my serving knots in 
a little bit of different way than what I've done them in the past. I really like this. So these knots that I'm getting ready to tie in are a nail, they're called a nail knot. I have a video uh, of doing this already on my trad bow. I'll link that down below so you can see that video. Double check it one more time, make sure I got the gap that I want. I got some wiggle, hopefully you can see that. Not a ton, but I think it's enough. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put me a D loop on. Biggest thing is you want your knots facing opposite from each other. Which on this it is. And I don't like my, I don't like my uh, D loop to be very long. Um, so I keep mine kind of short. It's kind of personal preference what you like. I like mine a little bit shorter. It's also gonna be very dependent on your release of choice. Especially if you're shooting a thumb release, you may want to stick with a longer D loop, depending on how you can't your hand. Still got some gap, really like the way that looks. That is dead center of the burger hole. So while we got it in the press, let's go ahead and slide. So if you're wondering where to put your cable for your drop away, you can take and kind of flex your bow. Look at the cable that goes down and that's where you want to put your drop away. So while we got it in here, I'm going to go ahead and press it down and mount that. You want to try to split this cable close to the center as you can. If you choose to shoot a string that has multiple colors, it's a little bit easier to find the center. You shoot a string that has two different colors. Normally it's the even, it's even amount of color on each side or each, it's the string is essentially cut in half. You got half of it one color, half of it another color. I don't have that on this one, so I'm just guessing. Get that in there. Kind of pull some of it through about where I think I'm going to need it. Let that back down. Now I've got to choose a peep sight. So this year I think I'm going to run the Hamsky Raptor peep. Never ran them before. I hear a lot of good things about them, so I'm going to give it a shot. Also, another thing is size wise, I like to run the um, 3 16ths. Let's see what kind of instructions we got on here. It's going to tell me the uh, angle selection on this thing. So I'm shooting a draw length of 27 inches. I'm shooting an axle to axle of 29 and a half. So the angle should be between 40 and 5 eighths and 41 0.45. So I want to use the 40 degree angle mark. There are indicator marks on here that indicate that 40 degrees. So let's go ahead and loosen this up. I'm going to leave this little piece of serving in here. I'm just going to slide it all the way up so that if I want to find my center again, I'm not having to fish for it. All right, that's all the way up. Run it back down. Probably going to be somewhere right in there. Find my 40 degrees again. Go ahead and get that thing set. I 
And this is, by, this is definitely the shortest bow I've shot, so I have no idea on actual, actual uh, position of this peep sight. That was just a wild guess. All right, so we got pretty much everything set up, how I'm gonna shoot it. Let's go back here and paper tune this thing and adjust our rest if needed, adjust our shims or our top hats if needed, but if not, we're gonna be ready to shoot this thing. All right, guys, let's see what this new bow draws as far as draw weight. Go ahead and check our timing and go ahead and check and set our rest. So timing wise, ooh, man, that bow's dead on the money. Dead on the money and drawing dead on 27 inches and let's see where our drop away is topping out at so i need to tighten that a little bit let's draw her all the way back let's see where our drop away is timing at now Perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and tie this thing before we do anything else. The only reason I'm not pulling it out, pulling it out of here is because when I tie this, I'm gonna recheck it real quick and just make sure I didn't move anything as I tie this knot in. Nice and tight. Pull it back through good and tight. Let's double check the timing again on the rest. Looks pretty good. Go ahead and shoot it a couple times. So we are drawing 76.2 pounds. All right, let's go ahead and get some fresh paper up here so you can see exactly what this thing does. All right, we're gonna shoot this thing from about 10 feet away. <laughs> oh man, it's nice when that happens. It's kind of hard to tell on that bullet hole. All right, so hopefully you can tell guys, you can actually see it better on the back piece. But as I close that up, it's hard to tell when you shoot a helical fletch, that is as perfect of a hole 
as you can possibly get. So I know, I know y'all won't believe it because nobody ever does when you say, oh, I didn't have to adjust the thing, but that's literally set the bow up, grab my arrow from last year, put the QAD on there, measured center of the string from axle to axle and from bottom of the cam, bottom of the cam, marked it, did my serving loops, put a D loop on it, kisser button, peep sight, drill back, check my timing, didn't adjust anything, timing was dead on, shooting 76 pounds, 350 spine, eastern axis, four millimeter long range, two bullet holes. I did not adjust a thing on timing. I did not adjust a thing on the rest. It was 100% out of the box. That does not happen very often for myself on a personal bow. Uh, so far, I am liking this setup a lot. I went ahead and tied in my peep sight. I went ahead and uh, double checked everything. I ended up having to retie my D-loop. Uh, I noticed that my string serving was kind of slipping, so just keep that in mind uh, for whatever reason. I guess just because it's a brand new string, uh, that serving wasn't uh, really, really tight, and it was definitely slipping and pinching my knock. So I ended up uh, reserving my knock points, and actually I took everything off slid my serving up to where it was bottomed back out, retied my knocking points, retied a D-loop, ended up going back with a white D-loop. Now, I've got the uh, new Garmin Zero. First time I've shot a bow over it, and uh, if y'all got, if you guys are interested in seeing a video of that uh, product compared to a standard, um, like a Caldwell type um, chronograph, just let me know. But uh, we're gonna shoot a couple shots over it, see how fast this bow's shooting. 436 grain arrow, 76 pounds, 27 inches. Let's test it out. Two ninety point five. Two ninety point seven. Two eighty nine point seven, so might as well say two hundred ninety feet a second. All right, guys. So it's been a couple days since I shot the first part of this video. Uh, I ran out of daylight on the initial day of the build. Uh, I'm back here at the house. I'm going to shoot a couple shots. I've almost got this thing dialed in. I think. I think I've got. I've got it pretty well figured out which uh, sight tape I'm going to put on it, or which I've already got it on here, but which one it's going to be uh, for this HHA Tetra. Um, so far, this is the first single pin I've ever shot on a bow. Uh, like I said before, I am going to get the three pin version, but it is pretty nice. It's also the first vertical pin sight that I've shot and I love it so far. Uh, a couple of things that I've changed since the initial build video, I had to take my top serving or my top, uh, serving knot off. Uh, my D loop actually pinched together a little bit and it kind of caused some pinching on my knock back at full draw. So I took the top one off, I left the bottom. Another thing that I changed on this bow, and I think a lot of guys probably did the same thing, is uh, I'm not a big fan of how rounded the engage grip feels on this bow. Uh, so I ended up taking a Dremel and just flattening the back of this um, grip. I'm gonna try that. If I don't like that, I'm gonna give a side plates a try. But other than those two things, this is still the same bow um, that I shot the other day in the initial build video. Uh, once again, 75 pounds. This is the 80% mods shooting a Eastern Axis long range, 436 grains total. And this is spitting this thing out at 290 feet a second. And uh, like right now, that deer target down here at 20 yards, I, I was able to shoot my Hoyt with the same arrow setup at 76 pounds and I wasn't blowing through that target. I can't even shoot that target right now with this setup, which tells me it's shooting quite a bit faster. Uh, I chronoed my Hoyt at 267 and I was thinking that maybe the chrono was off, but after shooting this bow and comparing the two, it was definitely not off. So let's, uh, let's shoot some arrows here, 20 yards. 
make sure we'll dial it in and we're gonna bring her on back. That one was a little bit low. And a little bit left. So let's make some adjustments. And one thing I did forget to mention, this bow, total weight, with everything on it, five arrows out of the six available, because when I'm actually hunting, uh, one arrow will be in the bow. Um, everything set up the way it is, is setting at 6.2 pounds. That is so light for an aluminum bow. There it is. All right, we're dead on at 20. Let's bring her on back. And uh, we're gonna try to stretch this thing out to 100 today. Slightly low. Didn't have it quite adjusted all the way down. That one looked good, a little bit right. There it is, dead on the money. Oh yeah, that's it right there, buddy. All right guys, here we go. First set at 100 yards with my brand new bow. I can't hardly see the target at 100, so just because of the lay of the land, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim at the top of the target and just see how my group is. So I'm gonna aim where the 365 is on the target. Like it may be ever so slightly low. That one felt good. A little bit low. Still not quite on my line. So I think I need to adjust my dial just slightly.
That one felt really good. Yeah, buddy. Let's go check this group out. All right, I've got both cameras rolling. I'm not gonna cut it off. The group's not that great because I had to adjust my sight just slightly. Didn't quite have it on 100. So let me show you where the arrow hit as soon as I moved it to 100. Pretty pumped for a bow that I literally just set up. I've probably got less than 50 shots, I would say, in this bow. Check this out. All the way to the target. Get everything straightened back up. All right, here's the first shot, about six inches low. Second shot, about five and a half inches low and a little bit to the right. I adjusted my sight to where it should have been at 100, and I was aiming at this 365 right here, and right there is my third shot. I am super pumped with that. 100 yards with a brand new bow. All right, guys, so for those of you that might have missed something, there's a quick overview of my 2024 setup. This is a brand new Matthews Lift 29 and a half. The guys at Grafton set me up with a sweet bow. Of all the bows that I shot this year from Matthews, Hoyt, PSE, and Bowtech, this was the one that checked all the blocks for my hunting bow, and this is the one that I'm gonna go with so far for the season, unless something changes. But as of right now, this is the bow I plan on shooting. It's in a black riser colorway with the earth limbs. It was something cool I saw on Muley Freak's um, YouTube channel, and I really liked the way it looked. I ended up going with the tan strings, tan serving, I just wanted to, something basic this year, uh, color-wise. I uh, did earth um, accessories. So as far as the accessories go, I'm shooting a 12-inch bridge lock stabilizer. I'm shooting a one-piece Matthews, or I'm sorry, a two-piece fixed Matthews quiver. It was the lightest and the, the tightest uh, quiver on the market for this bow. And since I don't take my quiver off when I hunt, that's what I went with. This thing is so dang tight. Like if you shoot anything else other than a integrated rest, it will not work with that, uh, with like one or two of your arrows. It's just, it's that tight. They do have a uh, block, like a riser, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So anyway, like I said, all the uh, accessories are earth color, uh, except for the rest, which is a QAD Ultra Rest Integrate. This is their MX2. Awesome little rest. I loved my MX1 from last year. And uh, so I went with the same thing this year, except in their new, their new iteration. And this is probably something that I'm the most excited about. This is my Dark Owl Stealth 41 uh, scope housing. And then my HHA Tetra uh, Rise Max. Um, and this is their three pin version. I bought just the sight bar from HHA and the UV micro mount from HHA. And then um, Cody from Dark Owl actually sent me this scope to test out and do a video on. So there will be a video coming on this sight setup in the very near future. Uh, and lastly, on this setup, I have my integrated limb legs. One thing I have noticed just as a uh, you know, tip or whatever, I'm shooting exactly the same with the limb legs on as I am with them off. So just FYI, if you do choose to shoot these limb legs, for me at least, out to 100 yards, these things I shoot the same with or without them. So uh, I've been very, very impressed with this bow. So far, this is looking like it's gonna be one of my favorite setups, uh, if not my favorite hunting setup ever. 
Uh, and as of right now, the only thing that I'm looking to change on this bow, just being completely transparent, is I'm probably gonna go away from the titanium outserts and I'm gonna go to the Easton 55 grain aluminum um, match grade components and I'm sticking with the same fletching setup for now. So unless something changes with that, this is gonna be the really the full setup, pretty much what I'm gonna be hunting. Anything in the country that I'm gonna go after this year is gonna be hunted with this setup. So like I say, guys, appreciate you watching the channel. Hopefully you got something out of the build. Remember to live your life to the fullest. Use your passions to bless others. And go check out the guys up at Grafton Archery. They'll get you set up with something like this. Have a good one, guys.